I've heard time and time again that painting infantry for legions imperialis is slow and boring. And so while I don't think I can change if you find it fun, I have managed to paint all of the regular infantry on this sprue, which is about 45 troops or nine bases in around three hours. That works out to around four minutes per miniature. Early on, I saw it suggested that you should really be painting your Legion's Imperialis infantry on the sprue. And yeah, it works, I've tried it. it, it does work, but it's really pretty cumbersome. Instead, I found that a much better solution is using a paddle pop stick, or a popsicle stick if you're so inclined, and some double-sided tape. Both of these are super cheap, and at least the paddle pop sticks can be recycled. So let's start by attaching the double-sided tape to the sticks, we'll clip out the miniatures and stick them to the tape. Now I hear asking why are we putting them on sticks? Well, there's three main reasons. It allows you to easily and rapidly paint the front and the back of each of the miniatures. In truth, I found the process of painting all the fronts and then all the backs to be quite frustrating and, and not particularly rewarding. You can then also easily see and paint the tops of the miniatures. I mean, if you think about it, the, the minis, the bit you're gonna be looking at really is the bit at the top. And so that's the bit that you wanna spend most of your time focusing on. And the tactical rock won't get any primer on it if it's stuck on the double-sided tape. This helps it to stick using just regular old plastic cement. Super glue is such a pain. It's brittle, it has a tendency to end up everywhere and yeah, not, not, not great. So if you can actually use just plastic cement, I find that so much better. Now you might notice that when I cut out the miniatures, I'm grouping them together by the base that they're gonna appear on together. This is so that later on down the track, I don't have to remember which individual minis go together. And it's kind of cool because it means I can work my way through one base at a time and sort of knock them over. It gives a nice sense of progression. Now, for me, the whole void armor that you see the Solar Auxilia wears makes me think of those old fashioned divers with say a dark blue suit and a copper helmet. So in keeping with that, we're gonna try and paint these Solar Auxilia with a real nautical theme. Now that we have all the miniatures ready to paint, we're gonna go and uh, start priming them and adding a base coat using an airbrush. I start by using my Vallejo Gray Primer. And then after that, we move on to giving all around a base coat of Cold Corpse Blue, followed by just spraying uh, from the top using Wolf Gray to create a, a bit of a highlight. And so we're gonna work through and do this for each of the different uh, sets of miniatures we've got. Once we have the base coat down, we can move on to quickly adding just that little bit of detail to all of the miniatures. I like using my airbrush for this, and it's really quick, but you could also just as easily use a rattle can and then put some contrast paint over the top. Contrast paint works so well at this scale. I find just cause there's so little, you get so little pooling and so you get this really nice definition in your model. Now, let's get started painting these details. To start with, we're gonna paint a copper color as I think it really complements the blue. So for this, we're gonna be using Overlord Brass from two thin coats. Now, something to keep in mind when painting Legion's Imperialis scale units, particularly with infantry, you're gonna be playing with them primarily on a tabletop. You're not gonna be up and looking closely at them. You don't necessarily need to be super careful with the details because from the distance, you're actually gonna be looking at them. You're just not gonna see that level of detail. And so really what we're going for when we're painting particularly infantry for Legion's Imperialis is we want really bright colors and we want good contrast so that the units stand out on the tabletop. We work our way through all of the infantry and then move on to the guns. And so for the guns, we're gonna use gun metal from Vallejo's air metal range. Also, we're gonna add a small amount of brown to each of the axes. And now we're gonna use just a little bit of gravestone blue on each of the shoulders for the infantry, just to really bring up the brightness level for the top of the miniatures. 
And to be honest, that's pretty much it for the actual colors, but we are gonna add a little bit of shade just to help give a little bit of definition. So we're gonna start with adding some Agrax Earth Shade, and we're gonna do that for all of the copper areas on the mini. So basically just the tops, and we're gonna give a little bit of a dollop on each. Just make sure to not let too much sit on the top of the mini. It's, it's difficult with the size they are, but it will darken it too much. And once we've done that, we're gonna move on to Oblivion Black Wash, and we're just gonna put that over all of the silver areas. Now, for the front of the Flamethrower Troops, we're gonna try and get a little bit of a tarnished metal look going there. And for that, I use a combination of Agrax Earthshade and Hellion Red Wash. I make sure to put them both on whilst they're both wet, and I give them a little bit of a mix so we get a bit of a gradient from the, the brown to the red color at the end. And now for one of the smaller details on the Solar Auxilia troops, we're gonna paint the lenses. And so for this, we're gonna use Ghoul Green. For painting these lenses, we're going to be relying on a technique similar to edge highlighting. We're making sure there's not too much paint on the brush, there's not too much water in the paint, and we're just brushing really gently over the surface, trying to make sure that we're only getting on the raised parts. After this, we're going to, on the uh, leader base, we're going to just paint a bit of green for the coats and for the banner as well. And we're gonna use Sons of Horus Green just to make sure that matches with the rest of the army that I'm working on. And then a little bit of Ghoul Green as just this quick edge highlight. We then paint the trim on the outside of the banner using Trooper White. And now we're basically done and that hasn't taken long at all. These troops look really distinctive already. We just need to transfer them across to their bases. Now I've prepared some bases ahead of time using a combination of dust bowl and sandstone paint uh, just through the airbrush and then a little bit of gold in spots just to pick out some of those uh, fancy details in the corner. And then for all of the lower areas on the bases, I've been effectively treating them as roads and I've painted them all up using Eilon Grey. So let's start attaching these minis to the bases. So I can basically here, I'm just pulling them all off, putting them in a pile, one base at a time. I'm getting out the plastic cement and just gluing the bases of the minis and putting them on. Despite having painted the base, we can actually just use regular plastic cement on the underside of the tactical rock as it's not covered with paint. This will give a much more solid bond. It's much less likely to break than super glue. I've played other small scale miniature games before and I ended up using super glue on them. And oh my goodness, the amount of times little tiny miniatures would break off and fall and you'd never find them again. So being able to use just regular plastic cement is a godsend. One thing I do find is that the mini in the center sometimes needs a bit of work with tweezers to try and get it into the right spot. And to tie the miniatures into the base, we're just gonna go over each of the tactical rocks and paint it the same color that we've used to paint the miniatures base. You probably could do this a little bit earlier when they're still on the paddle pop sticks. And yeah, it would be a lot easier to do. But by leaving it until now, we can make sure that the color matches the area on the base that the miniature is gonna be attached to. Now, all that's left is to add a quick transfer for the squadron, and we're done. That was so quick and quite rewarding to be able to work through them one base at a time. So are there any tricks that you've picked up for working with Legions Imperialis scale troops? Please let us know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching.